Think of now a story. The story. This story is a continuation of this, the Amsterdam story. So we went to Amsterdam and we were there for like a couple of days and I, you know, I'm, my, I, I played along and I was happy and I was smiling and everything like that. And actually I, there was a few shuls over there I spoke. At that time there was no Chabad house in Amsterdam. No, there is, I think, no, there is. Anyway, so we're coming back home, right? So we're coming back home. And when I'm on a plane coming to Israel or going from Israel, I try with God's help and up to now I've pretty much succeeded. There were certain exceptions, but that's a story in itself. To put tefillin on people. How do you put tefillin on people in a plane? What do you do? How do you put tefillin on people at all in general? So I, I got a lot of experience, so I'll tell you what to do. First of all, you take the tefillin out of the box. Take the tefillin. And then what I do is I take the head tefillin and I put it in my pocket. And I take, I have a little Kriya Shema and a kippah. I put it in my, my, in my shirt pocket. And then I offer people the tefillin so it's ready. It's not, a the, it's not a theoretical question. Come put on tefillin. Are you Jewish? Put on tefillin. Now usually if it's, if it's a, you know, a plane like from America or something like that. So I have to ask people if they're Jewish or not. <clears throat> so I stood up and it's coming from Amsterdam. And here it was totally not necessary to ask if people were Jewish. Why? Because first, first of all, I heard from all of the Israelis, there's, there's a plethora of Israelis in Amsterdam. And everyone said the same thing. Do you know, with this sort of weird smile on their face, do you know that there's never less than 50,000 Israelis in Amsterdam at any time? Amsterdam is, is definitely not a holy city. They're not there in order to do anything that resembles in any way Judaism. <clears throat> Amsterdam, okay. So now we're coming back. So I figure there's a lot of Israelis, so I'll put the tefillin, and I'll ask people if they're Jewish. So I stand up and I realize it's totally not necessary to ask people if they're Jewish or not. Why? Because the Dutch people are very unemotional people. They're sort of like their shoes, you know, their wooden shoes. Everyone's just sitting there, you know, maybe reading a newspaper or, or you know, sort of talking to someone next to them. Or, but mostly they're just sitting there. That's the, I guess they get this pleasure of just sitting there. So I didn't have to do anything. On the other hand, the Israelis, they couldn't stop moving. You know, they're always moving around, journeying around. Even when they're asleep, they're always moving. So I just stood up and anything that moved, I just zeroed in. So I asked some people if they wanted to put on, and it was very noisy. The flight was very, the flight itself. I mean, not the people were talking. It was just, so I, uh, <clears throat> so some people put on, some people didn't put on. So I came, there were three Israelis sitting one next to the other. This is like in, in the second row, you know, I went past the door, there was this, whatever, this is where the, the kitchen is or something, and I went, then there was the second row. So there was the first row, I saw obviously nobody was Jewish, and then the second row, there was these three Israelis sitting, and it was like, sort of like, you know, uh, evolution, you know, like Piltdown Man and Cro-Magnon Man or whatever it is, and you know, Neanderthal Man. So there's these three levels. First guy is sitting there, He's got like a little tattoo on his shoulder. He's got, they're all wearing like short sleeve shirts, uh, sleeveless sh shirt. He's got a little tattoo on his shoulder and a little earring in his ear. He's got like a little patch of, you know, blue. His hair is done blue, dyed blue. The guy sitting next to him, he's got like two earrings and also an earring in his nose and he's got a few tattoos. And his hair is dyed like, you know, it's, there's a patch of blue and then there's a patch of like pink over here. The third guy, he was the one sitting next to the window. He has this mohawk hairdo, you know, everything is shaved. And his hair is like dyed blue in the beginning and then green in the, in the center, and then it's like pink in the end. And he's got all these tattoos on him. God should help us. And he has all these earrings, piercings, like any place that you could possibly put a piercing, 
he had a piercing. I shudder to think, you know, what was going on under his shirt or whatever. Is anyway, so piercings. He's got piercings all over the place. So <clears throat> I asked the first guy, "Would you like to put on tefillin?" And he looks at me like I'm offering him a dead cat, you know. And he just. <laughs> so I said, "Okay." So I asked the second guy if he would like to put on tefillin. So he just goes like this. I said, well, "Would you like to put on tefillin?" So he goes. Like he's asleep. The guy's asleep. You know? <clears throat> so I asked the third guy, one sitting next to the window, and he, I was like, sure he wouldn't put on the villain because the first didn't. So I said, Would you like to put on the villain? So the third guy says, What's the line to fill in? He's the third guy says, uh, Ah, what? To fill in, would you like to put on the villain? So the third guy still didn't, what? So the first guy, He's like looking at me in this victory look, you know, like, you know, go play outside, you know, get away from us, leave us alone, you know, we're normal people. What do you? <clears throat> so I said, to fill in, would you like to put on to fill in? The third guy, he said, oh, to fill in? Sure, sure, of course. And he stood up, he had to sort of co- bend over and he stuck out his arm. So the first guy, he was like really ashamed. He just took a newspaper and just looked in the newspaper. And the second guy, he was going with this, he went, opened up his eye. And he looked to see what was going on. And the third guy put on tefillin. Meanwhile, sitting in the first row in front of us, and there were these non-Jews. And the fellow sitting in the middle, he, this arou- he heard the noise going on and the talking. So it sort of aroused his interest. So he turned around and he looked at what was going on. So I said to him, um, you want to know what's going on? And he said, I said in English. And he said, yes. So I said, just, just wait, I'll finish with these people. So <clears throat> I took the tefillin off this other guy, offered the other two, no way. They didn't want to put on tefillin, no way. And <clears throat> I went around to this first person. I said, what's your name? And he says his name was like Hans or something, Lars, I don't remember. And I said, well, uh, you know, Hans, you know what these are? These are, we're Jews. And this is a, a Jewish commandment. And it's, um, and it, it's uh, the main thing in this commandment. I said, there's two boxes of leather and it has these parchments inside. And on the parchments are written the three paragraphs where this commandment appears in the Bible. He's taking this all in, right? And he's, he's still sitting there with this sort of, you know, wooden face. <clears throat> and he's sitting down, right? He's sitting down. It's a well, well-dressed guy. And I say, uh, and the main thing that's written in here is, listen, Jews, God is one. You know what it means, uh, hands, that God is one? So he said, no. So I said, what it means that God is one is that God, there's nothing except for God. God is creating everything. He's creating me, and he's creating you, and he's creating us all the time. And you know why he's doing it? Why? I said, from love. He's just doing it for free. Doing it for free. So if God is creating it for free, so maybe you should do something for him for free. There's what's called the seven Noahide commandments. And I started explaining. The whole conversation that I had with him took maybe three minutes. When I finished, he stood up and he yelled at the top of his lungs, but it was very noisy, so it was hard to hear. He yelled out, he said, this man is right. This rabbi is saying the truth. And I want to apologize to him for what our people have done to his people. We have taken a man and said that he is God. And we have tried to negate the holy commandments. When he said that, he like really screamed. We have tried to negate the holy commandments. With that, he shook my hand, straightened his tie and said, now the other two people sitting next to him, they were just sort of, you know, they sort of looked at him uh, like that. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he, he does the same thing every day at like two in the afternoon. I, I doubt, but I doubt it. I doubt it. Something happened there that aroused in him <clears throat> the fact that he's a creation of God and that God really loves him. And that's the message of the Jews to the, to the world. But we have to be a little bit brave, a little bit crazy in order to evoke this from people. And that's called Shtut the Kedusha, and that's what's going to bring the Mashiach. Have a good day. Three, see you all at 3 o'clock. Yeah, oh, by the way, yesterday, I didn't say, and I'll sign the show for also because this is the end.